अगले 30 सेकंड्स में आप बदल सकते हैं अपने लाइफ का ट्रैक एंड नेवर लुक बैक यार छोड़ो ये सारे हैक्स एंड सिंपली लर्न टू गेट अहेड जैसे कि दानिश अ सिविल इंजीनियर टर्न डेटा साइंटिस्ट हु डिसाइडेड टू सिंपली लर्न और कैसे हुआ ये पॉसिबल विद अ कोर्स फ्रॉम अ प्रीमियर यूनिवर्सिटी मेरे करियर ने लिया एक नया डायरेक्शन ट्रू चैंपियन हु अपस्किल्ड टू विन बिग हाउ बिग a massive hike that transformed my life danish changed gears pretty early in the race but prasen wanted to explore more to get ahead isliye usne kara simply learn from mechanical engineering to a data analyst and a podcaster in his free time aisa career transformation kaise bro simply learn ke industry experts se sikha live aur khud ban gaya data expert itna kuch itni jaldi difficult to raha hoga with a well structured course It felt like a piece of cake. That is simply awesome. What's also awesome is that no sal ke long career ke baad Nitin didn't choose a quick fix. He just added data science into the mix. Nitin, how did you change the game? Worked on real industry problems to become the real deal. A joint family, a regular job, responsibilities to bahut thi, but nothing could stop Nitin from getting ahead. What an all-rounder. Day ho ya night with flexible learning, you can always make it right. Bashing your situation chahe jo bhi ho Nitin Danish aur Prasen ki tarah you too will find your way to get ahead when you simply learn kyunki aapke liye shortcuts nahi simply learn hai sahi get ahead with simply learn Hi folks, uh, we'll be starting the free career masterclass uh, pretty soon in some time. Uh, meanwhile, I can see a lot of introductions coming in on chat. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever wherever you're joining us from. Uh, I'm your host Rasha Khan for uh, today's webinar, and I'm joining from Bangalore, India. And I'm thrilled to be your host today. So drop us a hello and let us know where are you tuning in from. so i can see uh, folks have already started introducing themselves on chat i can see folks have joined from uh, kenya i can see norma has joined from kenya i can see rajiv has joined from kolkata i can see shobita has joined from delhi i can see obed has joined from south africa i can see nathaniel has joined from ghana so again once again welcome everyone keep the introductions coming in uh it's always good to network right these events before we start awesome i can see folks have joined from different different parts of the world so the, basically it's we're having a global conversation here on chat so uh once again like uh, welcome everyone it's fantastic to have you all on board uh for the free master class i uh, will be talking about why cloud computing is the right career for you in 2024 and we'll be starting in few minutes meanwhile i uh, i can see folks are still joining in and uh, uh, basically giving their interactions on chat uh in case like if you're giving introduction uh we are not able to make out your name from email id please do mention your name as well i see a lot of folks are mentioning their name as well i can see an angela has joined from ethiopia simon has joined from nigeria emmanuel from nigeria i can see mohammed has joined from pakistan i can see alfred has joined from south africa but he is in germany at the moment i can see scott has joined from chicago and uh, moses has joined from ghana so once again welcome everyone uh, i am your host for today's webinar my name is rashad khan for folks who have just joined right now and uh, we're just waiting for a few more minutes i'm just having like an engaging conversation on chat here before we start
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Keep the introductions coming in. And uh, just a quick tip for folks who have already joined early, uh, that uh, in case you have any questions about cloud computing career in general, you can let us know in the Q&A box. So I'm pretty sure you're joining the session because you're curious about careers in cloud computing. And I'm pretty sure you have a lot of uh, questions about that. And uh, you can basically put down your queries in the Q&A box and I will make sure that all of your queries are answered. Awesome. As I was speaking, I have already see that uh, folks have already put down their questions in the Q&A box here. So that's great. You guys have come prepared. I can see that. So once again, I see a lot of folks, new folks have also joined as we were speaking. So we're just doing a quick round of introductions here before we start. Uh, so I'm Rasha Khan. I'm your host for today's webinar. And I'm joining from all the way from Bangalore, India. I would love to know where are you joining uh, from on the chat here? As you can see, uh, folks are introducing themselves on chat and they have joined from different, different parts of the world. I can see Shimong has joined from Nigeria, Sayed has joined from India, uh, Harris has joined from Nigeria, and I can see Hashoda has joined from Pune, Bharat, <laughs> and uh, I can see Bola has joined from Sweden, uh, and, uh, and I see a lot of introductions coming in here. So uh, let's start with a few ground rules here. Uh, you, uh, as I mentioned earlier, for folks who have just joined right now, that if you have any questions for our speaker here today, you can always put on your questions in the Q and A box. And uh, the session is being recorded. In case you have any uh, basically questions, if you have missed any part of the session, you can always expect a follow up email from us uh, with a recording link and also bonus offer for attending this webinar for the program part. As you can again, avail that bonus offer for the program, which I'll be uh, explaining towards the end of the session. And also to request a proof of attendance for this webinar, you can provide your name in the post webinar survey. That is something you'll be getting over mail once the webinar is done. And uh, uh, so the, today's program is powered by uh, Sibley Learn World's number one online bootcamp. And uh, we are very proud. We have been in the digital skill, skill space in, for almost last 13 years. And uh, we have advanced over 5 lakh plus careers in over 150 plus countries. And we have some 800 plus qualified trainers uh, who basically uh, make sure that you, know, you are uh, basically transforming your life through uh, these programs here. We have a lot of categories like AI, machine learning, business analytics, cybersecurity. And today we'll be covering the cloud computing one. So if you have any questions, please do let us know in the Q&A box. Let's quickly go through the agenda here. Uh, we'll be uh, getting to know a little bit more about you, how we can basically help you out better in your cloud computing career, career and answer all of your queries. You know, uh, um, As I can see that folks have already started putting the, uh, questions in the Q&A box, that's great. And we'll be talking about cloud computing careers uh, and uh, how Caltech CTMA helps you, the program. Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about learner outcomes of the Caltech uh, postgraduate program in cloud computing and also taking you through the enrollment steps and there will be a special duration for the Q&A part. So we will try to take as many questions as possible throughout the session, uh, but just in case we are not able to answer all of your queries uh, throughout the session because we have a limited time, right? We have only like 60 minutes to cover. So what we'll do is we'll take it towards the end. So just keep your questions relevant and keep it related to cloud computing. That's the only request we have. And I'll make sure that all of your queries are answered. So uh, once again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. So uh, before we start, uh, as I mentioned that, uh, let's get to know each other a little better. So you can see a quick poll on your screen here, uh, which says that how many years of experience do you currently have? So uh, and you can see four quick options here. The first one currently studying, second one zero to three years, third one three to five years, and the last one more than five years. And I was, as I was speaking, folks have already started sharing their responses in the poll here. That's great. We have gotten a really active audience here. And I can see the introductions coming in on chat like here as well. So that's great. That's great. We have gotten a really active warm audience here. And uh, we'll be starting the session just after this, just after this quick experience poll. And we already have our speaker, Purushottam, uh, here with us. So uh, Purushottam, where are you joining us from? Yeah. Hi, uh, Rashad. So I'm joining from India, Maharashtra, basically Nagpur. 
Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay. Uh, welcome, Purushottam, once again. Thank you for taking the time out uh, for uh, this career masterclass. Uh, let's see, let's just give like 10 seconds more for the experience poll here, just to understand what are the folks, you know, what experience do the folks have, you know, uh, who are joining us uh, in this session today. So I'll just give five seconds more uh, because I can see most of the folks have already shared the response in the poll. So uh, five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll and share the results with you. Let's see like what are the results. So we can see that 34% of the folks are currently studying and just the opposite 30% of the folks have more than five years of experience. So basically we've gotten uh, basically huge time of experience here folks joining from different different experiences here and 32% uh, of the folks have zero to three years of experience and few of the folks have three to five years of experience. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, we'll move on to a uh, speaker introduction today. Uh, so Dr. Purushottam Asudani has joined us for taking us through the career masterclass, basically what you can expect in cloud computing careers in 2024. Uh, so uh, Dr. Purushottam, once again, like welcome to the session. And uh, please give us your introduction for the crowd here. We would love to know more about you. Sure, thank you. So hello everyone and welcome to the class today. Thanks Rasha for inviting me. So um, I'm working as an assistant professor in information technology department in Sri Ramdeva College of Engineering and Management, Nagpur. I specialize in cloud computing, uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, and operating systems. I'm a Google Scholar, corporate trainer. I've delivered multiple corporate trainings on uh, public cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, and GCP. Um, associated with multiple world-class consultancies like Simply Learn, also associated with Caltech universities, many IITs for delivering the postgraduate program in cloud computing. Um, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, AWS certified trainer, AWS certified solutions architect professional, which is the top level certification on AWS in the architect domain, three times AWS certified, Microsoft Azure certified, um, yeah, Oracle certified associates. Um, so that's in short about me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Purushottam, for your introduction. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the session here. So let's talk about careers in cloud computing. So uh, as we can see that cloud has become the backbone of the digital economy here today. So uh, Dr. Purushottam, can you share your comments on uh, cloud being the backbone of the digital economy today? Yeah, actually, see, um, now uh, cloud has become the backbone of digital economy. Uh, why? Because see, uh, it is almost in every sector, uh, not just in IT, but then um, uh, like it is almost in every sector, may it be marketing, may it be grocery, may it be every, ev anything or everything. Cloud is everywhere, guys, because um, whenever it comes to storing your data or the servers, uh, so it's always um, a costly affair to have it in your on-premises environment, then to have it in the cloud, especially in the public cloud platforms uh, like AWS and Azure or gcp these are the market leaders basically and um, it's 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 predicted that by 2025 almost 90 percent of the companies will move towards cloud see the uh big mncs are already in cloud and uh, they, they 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 do use cloud computing to save a lot of uh, uh their expen uh, expenses uh, to save a lot of the costing uh and to, of course, uh, avail a, a lot of uh, advanced features that the cloud providers uh, provide us. Okay, apart from that, even the startups, um, now uh, let's say tomorrow, if one has to have his own startup, so um, he can he can very easily can have it in the cloud rather than having it in the on-premises environment. Uh, a person, I mean, um, a complete company can be set it up in cloud, correct? So that's the beauty of the cloud so in that way uh, people can actually save a lot of uh, their expenses and uh, uh, they can just benefit from the features of the cloud and uh, have their complete environment complete organization running in cloud platform and that's that's how it has become the backbone of the digital economy today yeah uh, well that sounds pretty interesting uh, of a career so thank you so much for answering that and taking through the cloud computing uh, digital economy, you know, backbone. So uh, here, uh, as we can see, there are so many career paths. Uh, cloud computing opens up in the year 2024 here. So uh, would you like to take us through these career paths which folks can explore just apart from becoming just a cloud computing engineer? There are so many career paths they can take up, right? So basically keeping in mind the next year to 2024 
uh, folks are aspiring to become a cloud computing expert. So uh, what, what would you uh, basically share for them? Uh, what career path to take up in the next coming year? Yeah, surely. Right. So uh, see, if you are new, new towards cloud, uh, well, you can start your journey in cloud um, by by learning uh, the introductory courses first on the cloud platforms uh, like in AWS, AWS um, uh, fundamentals like AWS practitioner and in Azure, Azure fundamentals. And then you can go with uh, the administrator courses and the architect courses and you can become a cloud engineer to start with. OK, by doing these courses. Uh, yes, so that is the way uh, uh, forward to go into, uh, especially if you are eyeing to get into cloud by 2024, you can start your journey in cloud by uh, by learning, uh, let's say in AWS, AWS practitioner, then uh, sysops admin or then architect, and you can become a cloud engineer. Okay. And uh, yes, if you are a database guy, if you are interested in the database stuff, um, yeah, if you are already a database engineer or have good hands-on on database in the on-premises environment, well, then in cloud, uh, you can get into the database role. You can get into uh, like database-related services and certifications like you have um, uh, big data specialty in AWS, uh, database engineer you can become. So then you can uh, try to become a cloud database administrator. Okay. And uh, if you are, if you are a coding guy, if, if, if you love coding and you are, you are pretty good in, in the programming side, then you can, you can try to go for cloud developer role wherein uh, you can uh, you can do uh, developer related certifications on AWS or Azure, like in Azure, you can go with Microsoft Azure AZ204, um, that is uh, Azure Developer Associate, or in AWS, you can go with AWS Developer Associate, correct? So um, that way you can become a cloud developer. Okay, uh, if you are if you are eyeing for a developer certification in AWS, well, you should uh, have good head, uh, good hands on in, in, in Java programming and then on, on Azure, you should be good maybe in, in, in .NET framework, correct? So that's there, <coughs> sorry. Then uh, if you are a security guy, guys, if you are interested in security and you are already maybe working as an on-premise security engineer or, 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 or you are interested in security related services, then you can go for security related stuff in cloud, like in AWS, you can go for AWS. Um, security specialty certification and or in Azure also you can go for AZ400 security certification. Um, and apart from that, even if you go with architect courses or admin courses, you will learn about security aspects. So that way you can, you can um, go with such courses and you can try to become a cloud security engineer. And yes, of course, uh, if you are already working as an architect or if you have good 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 experience um, um good number of working years of experience okay and and if you are already maybe working as a cloud engineer or you're not working as a cloud engineer but you are uh, you're working in the architect role or if you have good number of years of working experience then you can uh, go and become a cloud architect and for this uh, you can try to achieve um, um let's say cloud related architect related certifications on aws like aws certified uh, solutions architect associate or architect professional uh, means after associate you can go with professional or aws uh, or sorry azure certified um, architect that is az305 and uh, yes uh, you can become an architect that way even if you go with architect certifications and if you don't have good ex good number of years of experience then you can go with cloud engineer role as well Correct. Uh, so that is how you can go about it. And yes, guys, if you are a DevOps guy, if you are um, uh, into building the continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines, if you are a DevOps engineer or plan to get into that role, uh, you want to do automation stuff, then uh, you can go with um, DevOps related services in AWS or Azure, like you can create your own continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline by CI CD services like code commit, code uh, deploy, code build uh, kind of services in AWS. Uh, like similarly, the services in open source, you have like Jenkins and Terraform and stuff. So you can go with such services and then you can become a cloud DevOps engineer. Yeah. So uh, there are there are multiple roles uh, you can go with, correct. Uh, so, so based on your interest and uh, your likings, uh, you can go with the related services and you can, you can opt for the um, uh, particular role in cloud.
Well, th that are, uh, you know, like many roles, uh, you know, folks can take up in cloud computing 2024. Uh, thank you so much for taking us through that, Dr. Prashutam. Also would like to add, Russia, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. See, uh, as you rightly said that there are so many roles. So, yeah. So if you are thinking that, okay, maybe uh, in cloud, I can only be uh, like, uh, get, get into one lateral or one uh, particular role. So that's not the case. Like whatever you have it in the on-premises, you have it in the cloud. And uh, so, so, so there are so many roles. Let's say, for example, if a person is uh, uh, is interested into programming, is a coder, uh, is is a coding uh, guy, so he can get into developer uh, role, correct? But if a person is not good into coding, because many a time people do have this myth that in IT industry, if you're not good in coding, well, you cannot get into IT. So that is not a uh, not actually the fact is, okay. So even if you're not a good dev a good coder, if, even if you're not a developer, you can get into IT still, and then you can get into cloud because there are so many other laterals that are still available for you. Uh, yeah, th thank you so much, Dr. Prashutam, uh, for answering that. And also we are getting a lot of messages on chat here. Folks would uh, request you to please put down that in the Q&A box. Uh, so we can take up those questions sir, because we don't want to miss out your uh, questions here. Uh, which I can see a lot of introductions coming in. Uh, as we talk about the career path here, uh, as we, you know, so are the salaries, right? So as we can see here, this uh, salary being the most important part, you know, when you are basically aspiring for a career in cloud computing. Uh, so as we can see here, we have gotten this source from Glassdoor here. So the annual salary for cloud developers in India specifically, uh, the highest uh, is uh, maximum is 22 uh, lakhs INR and the lowest is 5 lakh when you're starting off. And also uh, similarly for uh, cloud architects here in India, uh, the maximum salary uh, they can get here is 33 lakhs and uh, they can get the lowest when they're starting off as 10 lakhs. The mid range for both of them are between 10 to 20 lakhs. So that is salary being an important part here. So I want to frankly ask you that uh, if you are aspiring for a career in cloud computing, so can you expect to get paid good? <laughs> for sure. I mean, see, uh, these numbers are anyways decent enough here, but um, I would like to tell you, uh, see, if you are if you are becoming a cloud engineer, um, see even the low ones as you can see as five lakhs and ten lakhs. So those are the ones that you can start off with, and then once you start in and you do good into this domain, so then there is there are like hardly any boundaries that you can have. Even that thirty three lakh that you have mentioned, like I have my own friend um, earning more than forty five lakhs per annum. He's a he's an architect. He's a cloud architect. Um, though he's having a good good number of years of experience. So then uh, the point that I want to mention is. Uh, even the highest that is mentioned here is not the highest. Uh, the the things go beyond that as well. So, um, I mean, the uh, best way uh, to get into IT uh, is to get into through cloud. Or if you are already in IT, uh, you can just transition your future um, into cloud because cloud is there to stay, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah. So definitely, that's definitely, definitely. Uh, I think we have gotten one question, uh, which basically is. Quite interesting that how artificial intelligence will impact the cloud computing industry in the times ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. So see, artificial intelligence a will impact the cloud computing industry. Means AI is already there in the cloud. Even if you talk about Azure or AWS or any of these market leaders, cloud platforms. So they are having a lot of great related uh, services related to AI and machine learning that are already there. Um, just to name a few, maybe if you go into AWS and if you go into ML services, machine learning services, so you have a lot of them already there. Like you have AWS recognition, which will recognize uh, uh, the objects from the images very accurately. Then transcribe services there, which would convert your speech into text. And that too, also it's very accurate. Then poly services there, um, which would which would convert this text into speech. Okay, um, so you have a lot of machine learning related services, AI related services already there. And the more the AI will mature, uh, the more the offerings the cloud providers will give you related to AI. Correct. And um, it's it's see even nowadays also in cloud, it's all about automation. Also, like when in when you get into DevOps, it's about uh, the automation journey. You create your CI CD pipeline. Things happens automatically whenever you change your code in the repository. The codes get deployed onto the platforms uh, like your EC2 or the VMs um, in an automated fashion. So 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 automation is 
already there and AI related uh, services are already there. And uh, as the uh, as the AI gets more matured, so those uh, things are getting integrated or will get integrated into the cloud platforms. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. Uh, Shubham, I hope that answers your question. Uh, please do let us know in chat here in the Q&A box if you have a follow-up question for uh, us. Uh, meanwhile, as we were talking about the career paths here and also the salaries in cloud computing, uh, we can't miss out the skills, right? The skills basically which are required to become a cloud pr practitioner. So as we can see, there are so many skills folks can start with. Uh, but uh, like, what would you suggest someone, you know, we have gotten a question in the Q&A box that how do you start? Like, you know, where do you start? What skills they can start with if they are basically aspiring to, you know, go towards a cloud computing career? Correct. So I would like to start this, as you rightly said that, uh, I mean, uh, we saw about the salary part, but we really cannot miss on the skills part because that is real important. And um, let me tell you guys, I mean, don't think about salary part, I would say, um, uh, just concentrate on the skills and the salary would all, uh, I mean, automatically will come to you. It's all about the skills. If you have the skills, if you have that neck, uh, so of course, uh, the things are going to follow for you. Correct. So uh, that's there. So uh, as far as the skills are concerned, of course, um, uh, to start off with or um uh, to 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 start uh, how would you get into cloud like uh, how would you start with so you should start with the basic fundamentals course into cloud like uh, in aws i would say you should start with aws practitioner certification which covers the jack of many services like it it will cover the introductory part of many services may not be the detailing of all but then yes the know-how of many services and then in Azure, uh, the similar service you, I mean, the similar certification you have got is Azure Fundamentals, is at 900. Okay, so you should start with that first. And uh, by doing that, you get to uh, know that what are the different services, how they work. You get to know the know-how of cloud, how it works, how the things are there and stuff like that. So you get into uh, like a good space wherein you can figure out that, okay, this is something that is of my interest or I, I can be good getting into cloud platform, correct? Once you are through with that, then you can always um, uh, go for the certification as per your role or your interest. Like if you are an admin guy, you can go with admin related certifications like AZ104 Azure Administrator Associate or uh, AWS SOPS Admin. And if you if you want to become an architect or you want to become a general cloud engineer wherein you want to have the uh, design related uh, uh, decisions you need to take. So you can go with AWS Architect Associate or Azure Architect, correct? And uh, if you are a developer or you have to get into that role, then you can go with developer certification and so on. So, so first you should go with the basics that is AWS practitioner or Azure fundamental, and then you can get into a certification or get into the uh, a particular uh, uh, lateral uh, that suits you or that is of your interest, correct? Like admin or sysops uh, uh, or maybe uh, the network engineer or architect and so on correct so that is there so uh, so you should first have the cloud provider selection like which one you can start with so i would suggest you can start with aws or azure first and then you can go and get into the other cloud also because see today is the era of multi-cloud platform uh, i mean you will hardly see a company working on the services of just one cloud platform uh, now if a company is there they would use some services from let's say aws some services from azure so um, probably you should have the knowledge of multiple clouds and let me tell you uh, Azure AWS being the market leader. So normally whenever a company thinks of moving towards cloud or multi-clouds, these are the obvious choices that they go with. So you can start with AWS or Azure first and then follow up with the other one. So cloud provider selection, uh, that way you can meet. And of course, um, uh, when you study about architect related services or admin, you will see about application migration, how you can migrate your application from on-premises to AWS performance testing in cloud cloud workloads, how you can move, how you can work on that in cloud. IAM means identity access management. So how uh, this is especially useful for an administrator uh, guy, uh, like how can you create your users in cloud? Like a company can have multiple user accounts. So how you can have multiple user accounts, how you can grant them roles to different services. Okay, so that they can do certain tasks like a network engineer can operate with networking related services and, and database admin can operate to database related services and so on. 
So that can be done with IAM identity access management. Plus, if you want to, in auto scaling, you study about, uh, let's say, uh, balancing the load across your VMs. And um, let's say with uh, sale days like Flipkart, Amazon, uh, they do have their sale days, correct, guys? So uh, during their sale days, the traffic on their website is not the same. It shoots up. So how to uh, how to cater to that traffic? So the number of instances, the servers on which the website is running should increase. So that can be done in an automated fashion using auto scaling. And when the sale days are off, they should be automatically reduced so that you don't have to pay for them when not required. So that again can be done with auto scaling. Correct. Then you have disaster recovery. So disaster recovery as in uh, like... Um, uh, let's say if you want to plan for DR purposes, disaster recovery purposes, when you can plan for it, let's say if you have your website running in, in, in one country, let's say India location and or let's say any, any country it is running uh, because the users are from that country. But then, uh, uh, if 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 God forbid, guys, if there is a natural disaster in some uh, X region and your website was running on the servers in that region, then the website uh, may crash completely. Okay, and the data may not be available. So in those cases, you can have your website data, you can have your servers replicated in another region, um, so that during the in case of disaster, also when complete region goes down, well, the servers in that region will go down, but then the website may be running. Uh, on on another servers in another region also so so the website can still be active during that time correct so uh, you can plan for disaster recovery that way and for that you have good services like in azure you have recovery services vault correct um, in aws also you have cross regional application to take care of that you can have your web services and api in cloud you can host your websites in cloud you can go with cloud migration and deployment. You can actually migrate your complete data from on-premises environment to cloud. Let's say in Azure, you can do it with Azure Migrate, correct? Um, if you have petabytes of data or exabytes of data in AWS, you can do it with Snowball device, offline data transfer pretty quickly. If you have exabytes of data, okay, so Snowball device may not work. It's just like a CPU. So then you can go with Snowmobile. That's kind of a truck that comes to your place. So in fact, they say that probably the data, exabytes of data, which would, which would have otherwise taken, let's say, 26 years to migrate that data from on-premises environment to cloud can be done um, with, with, with snowmobile devices in a matter of less than six months. Okay, so that's the beauty. So that way you can migrate. Um, yeah, you can have your database uh, managed in cloud, uh, multi-cloud deploy deployment, I already told you. Plus you have storage services like uh, you have, uh, you can store any kind of data and any amounts of data in cloud, like you can store uh, uh, object related data, block based data, uh, shared file storage data in cloud. So you have services for that, like you have S3 for object related data, EBS volumes for block based data, EFS and FSX, uh, the services in AWS for, uh, for file uh, share storage data, correct? So you have a solution for everything I say. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bhushwatham, for taking us through a detailed explanation of these skills in cloud computing. Also, uh, just, just a question here. Basically, uh, what would be the most in-demand skill in 2024 for someone who basically is thinking of a cloud computing career? So what would you say as an in-demand skill or and also a career path? Okay. So in-demand skill as in in cloud, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um... See, in-demand skill as in in cloud. Um, now there are multiple letters, so I would say uh, it's 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 difficult to say one. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, uh, what I really feel like uh, is that if you become a cloud DevOps engineer, well, that is something in thing is okay. So I would rate the DevOps engineer uh, role uh, to be the in thing, okay, in twenty twenty four, okay, because it it deals with automation, okay, and um, about DevOps engineer, and if you get into the uh, machine learning and uh, the database speciality, big data and machine learning speciality in cloud, well, these are uh, going to boom up, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as the architect role is concerned, it's it's kind of an evergreen thing. Okay. So it would there, but then the boom, uh, the hype uh, that would be created would be in these roles, I would say. Well, that, that sounds interesting. Uh, please do let us know, folks, if you have any questions about uh, cloud computing, computing uh, careers in general, you know, in 2024. Please do let us know if you have any questions about that. We'll be taking those questions. 
And also we're getting a lot of questions in the Q&A box. We'll be taking those pretty soon. Meanwhile, we have talked about the skills here. We have talked about the career paths you can take up in cloud computing. We have talked about the salaries uh, in cloud computing. Uh, as a fresher, as an expert, uh, we have talked about what is the most in-demand skill in a career path in cloud computing. So what exactly is stopping you from becoming a cloud computing expert? So uh, you're here, obviously, so you're interested in cloud computing. You basically are aspiring towards a career in cloud computing, but we would love to know what is the biggest challenge here so we can help you out better uh, as we move on to the program uh, preview here of uh, Caltech's PGP cloud computing uh, program. So uh, you can see four quick options here. Uh, so these are the ones we have basically put up. We feel like, okay, these are the most suitable ones, but obviously you can let us know on chat here or in the Q&A box as well. Uh, if basically it does not basically cover your points here. So uh, I can see as I was speaking, folks have already started sharing the responses in the poll here. So this one is a multiple choice question. So you can select multiple options here because there can be multiple concerns, right? Which is stopping you from becoming a cloud computing expert. So uh, I'll just give 10 seconds more because I can see most of the folks have already shared their responses on the poll. So that's great. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've gotten a really active uh, audience here and uh, an active set of uh, learners, I would say. So uh, also, I'll just give 10 seconds for the poll, but I'm just wanted to point out once again that uh, folks, I understand you have a lot of questions, but uh, as you're putting down your questions in the chat box, we actually will miss it because we're getting a lot of questions there. So that is why we have basically a designated place for the questions here. That is the Q&A part. You can just go and quickly just copy paste the same query on the Q&A part. That, that, that is just beside the chat box here. So, uh, okay, I think uh, I'll just uh, also read out the options here for folks who are still uh, basically, uh, you know, left out in, in this response of the poll here. So what exactly is stopping you from becoming a cloud computing expert? The first option here is, I can't find a program with a fully comprehensive curriculum here. And the second option, I wouldn't get the practical exposure I need to become job ready. And the third one, I find it difficult to learn from pre-recorded videos. And the last one, my work schedule won't allow me enough time for learning. So uh, I'll just give five seconds more for a few of the folks who are left because we would love to know what exactly is your biggest concern, biggest challenge here, so we can help you out better uh, with the upcoming program top in points. So I'll just give five seconds more. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll and also share the results with you folks. Uh, so as we can see that we have gotten the highest amount of votes, 51% votes for the second option here, that I wouldn't get the practical exposure I need to become job ready. And 43% uh, of the folks have voted for, I can't find a program with a fully comprehensive curriculum. And 22% uh, of the folks have voted for, I find it difficult to learn from pre-recorded videos. And 24% of the folks have voted for my work schedule would allow me in time for learning. I think uh, we get that because most of the folks who have joined us have quite a lo lot of amount of experience. So that makes sense. Now, moving on to the program part here. Moving on to the program part here. Uh, so Caltech's postgraduate program in cloud computing here comes with, comes with an industry aligned learning path and uh, you get uh, integrated hands-on labs and projects which you can basically add onto your portfolio here when you're basically trying to get out there and get a job in cloud computing uh, and other career paths in general related to it. And you get access to online virtual classrooms. And also this program will be flexible to fit your schedule because this program duration is of 11 months, but you can just complete it by giving 10 to 15 hours per week. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Prashutam, I just have one question about the learning environment here of the program. So, uh, what is the kind of interaction which happens between an instructor and, and a peer? Because it's a live virtual classroom, right? So, what do we see happening there? Like, wh what have you seen basically? What is the experience that students have had? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, basically, I would be um, very good in sharing that because I've been taking these classes uh, for the PG program in cloud computing. Yeah, so uh, basically, see, it's a live class. Uh, we have a four-hour uh, session. And mm -hmm. in that, uh, normally what uh, we follow, especially I follow is, um, I'll go through a topic and then uh, we will have the concepts of that topic, then the re lab-related stuff on that topic. And then whatever the questions that comes up, um, probably in the chat window. So let me tell you, like today, there are a lot of participants and we do have a timing constraint. So may not be, we are not, not answering the questions there itself right now. Yeah. But then during my live classes, whenever the question comes in the chat window, I have the neck of answering the questions then and there itself. Okay. Yeah. 
if not then and there itself maybe i am in the in the middle of some topic i'll finish that topic off and then we'll answer those questions okay so it is not like i'll go to the end of the session and then i'll answer the questions because it's a 4 hour class and then probably if i would answer it at the end of the session then um as participants may miss on the uh, yeah. like the concept of that particular topic so uh, between that topic itself then and there itself or after finishing that topic we do answer the questions um so that's how we go about it and many a times we do uh, also give our learners uh, to do the hands on activity along with us and if they come up with any doubt we 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 do solve it uh, during that time also at times it has also happened like we we sometimes get the participant screen also and we we do um, sort their issue out uh, during the session itself so normally they put their queries in the chat window we do answer it if it is not getting solved uh, through the chat window or maybe they are having an advanced query we do unmute them as well and they ask their queries and we do answer it so that's how it goes so it's an interactive learning basically so the problem of uh, having a pre recorded sessions and not having the interaction is is totally not there it's totally mm -hmm. gone that way okay mm -hmm. so it's it's purely interactive session wherein uh, the learners would learn while the trainer would explain okay um, so that's how it goes uh i think i can i can speak for that because i've seen your sessions here even in project demo sessions you have done right yeah. and uh, even though it will take longer time but you make sure to answer all of the questions throughout the session and, and it kind of gives a sense of you know basically how basically you your uh, learning environment will look like so i can speak for that folks here uh, for uh, dr prashottam's live virtual Thank classrooms you. here <laughs> so uh, and 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 end of it all you will be getting a caltex uh, ctme pgp certification here you can see on the screen here uh, this will be a post graduate program uh, certification by caltech in cloud computing and uh, you will be getting access to over 40 projects for your portfolio including a capstone one which one which will be talking about in the upcoming slides and also someone has asked about the curriculum we'll be talking about that you know our dr prashottam will be taking you through that in in detail and uh, we'll be receiving up to 30 cus from caltech ctme that is equal to 300 hours of uh, learning and uh, caltech ctme circle membership which is again like a uh, close knit uh, circle of uh, alumni is basically who come from diverse industries uh, diverse uh, basically companies are also and basically the learners which we had in the past you know have consisted of you know, basically folks joining from different different uh, companies and uh, industries as well so it makes it pretty interesting to be a part of that circle and an online convocation so in an online convocation setting uh, you can not only invite your closest family or closest friends but also your far relatives and far friends and uh, basically this does not happen in an offline setting and it makes makes it equally interesting you know the online convocation part uh, by caltech here and also a job assist uh, program through simply learn which i'll be talking more about in the upcoming slides so uh, folks you have any question about the program here you can let us know in the q and a box and uh, also uh, if basically you have questions about cloud computing in general you can let us know in the q and a box will because we'll be taking those questions pretty soon here yeah? so let's talk about the caltech cdma advantage here so uh, the california institute of technology is a 130 year old institution it's a very old institution here uh, and basically having a caltech cdma a name on your cv is a very prestigious accomplishment that means worldwide and uh, caltech consistently ranks in the top 5 universities worldwide and also is a home of uh, to a lot of uh, alma maters of you know many low, noble laureates uh, so uh, dr prashant just want to ask like about the caltech ctm advantage here so what do you think like uh, the caltech uh, basically acts as an advantage for someone basically taking up this course what have you seen basically in your classes we know when they have completed the program what is the caltech advantage part here maybe in a very short uh, answer you can let us know see it's 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 actually huge i would say because um, when you have caltech uh, written on your cv it adds a lot okay um, probably uh, it is caltech uh, as i have seen it's 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 ranked among the top 5 universities around along uh, around the globe okay um, and uh, one of my relatives only uh, like last year he was trying to get into the undergraduate program of caltech university somehow he couldn't make it last year but he's trying to get into this year so uh, the point is that if you have that caltech ctme in your uh, in your resume well that adds a lot okay that that itself speaks because uh, that's the brand value uh, that one um, aims for isn't it
Yes, 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 definitely. And uh, that is the Caldex CDA, uh, CDMA advantage for you folks here. Uh, now, uh, I think someone has asked about the eligibility and prerequisites for this program. So I'll just take, take you through quickly here. And uh, so basically you uh, may be from a non-programming background, uh, that is okay. And you need to have a bachelor's degree with at least 50% marks and uh, no work experience is required here. So uh, if you basically don't have a prior work experience uh, in any field or even in cloud computing, that is totally, you can take up this program and start fresh. Uh, so uh, like just a quick question or once again, like Dr. Purushottam, like as it says, like you may be from a non-programming background. So what level of programming uh, knowledge is expected uh, to take up this program? See, if you want to become a developer in cloud, developer associate, Z204 Azure developer or AWS developer associate, then you should be having the programming uh, knowledge for sure. Without mm -hmm. that, don't go for that developer certification. But yes, if you if you're not going for that developer certification, then of course, uh, programming knowledge, even if you don't have, that's not a problem because that is not required. Um, the small uh, stuff in, in architect or sysops admin, the uh, programming related small stuff, if at all required during that program, that would be covered during the program itself. But then, yeah, uh, for those kind of courses, uh, a non-programming background is preferred. Like it's, 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 it's perfectly okay. That's not a problem. Uh, thank you so much for answering that, Dr. Purushrutam. I think we have gotten a few questions uh, in the q and about that uh, definitely answers that. Uh, now, moving on, how this program basically prepares you? I think folks have asked about the curriculum part. Maybe you can give them a little glimpse of, you know, uh, what exactly happens in the program and how exactly it prepares them. So let's talk about how the program builds, uh, you know, their cloud skills step by step. Right. Uh, so... Uh, see, when you get into the PG program, postgraduate program in cloud computing, it starts off with the orientation session for cloud computing program, uh, wherein um, an orientation session would be taken for you. You would be given the idea of what would be covered in the course and uh, stuff related to that. And then uh, you would get into, so that's an introductory lecture you will get into. Then you get into AWS Solutions Architect course. So, uh, that will uh, prepare you for the architect role on AWS, architect certification in AWS. Okay, uh, basically uh, this AWS cloud fundamentals would come before AWS architect and then AWS architect would come. Okay, and so in fundamentals, as I uh, told you, you will have the know-how about the services in AWS and then you would go with AWS solutions architect. Um, and then uh, you move to Azure because as I told you that uh, the era is of multi-clouds and uh, when you talk about multi-clouds, um, the market leaders are AWS and Azure. So once you once you complete AWS stuff, then you get into Azure role and then in Azure, uh, the compulsory courses that you need to study or you will study is first one is Azure Administrator, that is AZ104. In that, you will get the practical know-how about uh, the different services. Uh, you will study different services, uh, do the hands-on on that, the lab, scenario-based labs you will do into it. And then uh, you get into the architect domain on Azure, that is AZ305. Okay, so that's basically Azure Architect. And uh, uh, so... So, so, so that that will help you make uh, take design design decisions in in Azure and uh, do the architect related stuff on Azure. And then you have got this good part now added to this that uh, you have then DevOps on AWS. So because DevOps, as I already told you, that uh, it can be the happening thing in 2024. Okay, uh, going ahead. Um, probably the high rated skill okay so uh devops on aws so devops related services like uh cloud uh, uh formation cloud uh cloud deploy uh, uh um, um then co code deploy code pipeline code commit uh, those services you'll study and then you can deploy your own continuous integration continuous deployment pipeline you can do automation on aws with devops on aws so uh those things you will study and then um so basically uh, what is devops on aws it's like it's an automation on aws let's say if you have some code in aws uh, uh, repository let's say code commit or github uh, then it would be automatically deployed on your ec2 instances and if you make some change in that code then again the changes will be automatically deployed onto your uh, ec2 instances or uh, your uh, computing platforms whatever it is so you don't have to manually do it it would be automated the activity correct so that's what uh, you do it in devops so 
you can become an automation engineer that way also. And then finally, you can um, you go with a cloud computing capstone project. So the, this capstone project will cover about the AWS and Azure related services together. Okay, uh, so it's a complete end-to-end -end, um, deployable, um, real-time deployable project that uh, will include the services of AWS and Azure both and uh, that way you will complete that capstone project and see it, during these projects every course will have its own project also wherein the uh, trainer would mentor you how you can do it plus the capstone project would be mentored as well okay and then there will be assignments as well and once you finish all these things guys uh, so after the end of every course you will get a certification from simply learn a certificate from simply learn and when you'll complete all these courses so then you will get that coveted um uh, uh, caltech certificate uh, that is postgraduate program in cloud computing from caltech university okay and apart from that uh, apart from all these compulsory courses uh, you have the elective courses also now these elective courses um, comes for no extra cost uh, whatever the cost you have it uh, for these compulsory courses for the program in that these electives also are included for electives, these are not mandatory. You can opt for one or all of these electives. Okay, so that's how it goes. And in the electives, you have cloud computing academic masterclass. So that is taken by um, the uh, faculty from Caltech itself, which you can attend. Uh, then you have AWS Developer Associate, SysOps Associate, Data Migration, Google Cloud uh, Platform Architect Training, and DevOps on Cloud. Correct. So all those are there. Yeah, so this is how you will be getting it step by step. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Prashutu, for taking us through the steps for a program, uh, how it basically builds your cloud computing skills. Also talking about the electives of the program here. So uh, the electives here are Claltech's uh, Cloud Computing Academic Masterclasses, which you can attend, uh, and AWS uh, Developer Associate, AWS uh, SysOps Associate, AWS Data Migration, uh, Google Cloud Platform Architect training you'll be getting access to and DevOps and Cloud as well. So these are electives. These are optional. They come as a part of the program. So you don't have to pay anything extra for that. It is up to you if you want to take it up. Uh, but yeah, there are very interesting electives, I must say, so to take up in this program. Now, uh, talking about the tools and uh, platforms you'll be learning in the program, uh, Dr. Prashutam. So um, I think uh, we have a question here from Shubham, uh, who basically is asking to what extent Linux knowledge is uh, needed to be actually ready to be become a good cloud professional. So I think maybe you can answer that and also uh, cover the tools and uh, you know platforms we have here. Correct. So yeah. So Linux knowledge. See, if you'll ask me, yeah. If you have uh, Linux knowledge, good. It is an advantage, and then uh, you should be having at least the basic knowledge of Linux. Um, if you want to be in, uh, let's say, uh, if you want to specially go into the AWS domain. But don't worry, uh, even if you join this course, uh, you would be given uh, the know-how of Linux or the some uh, self-paced course that you can do on Linux and then you can opt for this. But yes, if you have, if you don't have knowledge on Linux, you can still study this. But if you have knowledge on Linux, then it is an added advantage. It is a good thing to have it, correct? So yeah, uh, and basic knowledge of Linux is good enough. Uh, you, you need not have to be a master on that. Basic knowledge of Linux should be good enough, especially for AWS, okay? And now tools and platforms you will learn. Uh, so of course, uh, these are just few services that are mentioned here, guys, really just few. But if you get into the course, you will learn a lot of services out of which few are these ones. Like you will you will learn the compute related services on AWS, like EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud, which, which you can create your virtual machines in AWS, uh, Lambda function, um, that is serverless, uh, Elastic Beanstalk. So these are compute related services then. You will also study about the database related services like data uh, for NoSQL data. You can get it stored in Amazon DynamoDB. That is the NoSQL data based service in AWS or for relational data. You can get into RDS, uh, relational database service and so on. Okay. So um, that is there. Lambda, I already talked about that comes under compute service. Okay. Uh, wherein you don't create the servers, but those will be provisioned behind the scenes if required. You just write your code in functions and then get your task done with that. Okay. Then for storage related things like S3 is an object based storage in AWS that can help you store unlimited amounts of data, uh, uh, object based data in, in, in S3 buckets, guys, in AWS. Correct. Plus you have block-based related storage services also like EBS volumes, 
uh, which can be used as virtual hard disk for virtual machines or shared storage like e EFS storage, elastic file storage for Linux machines or uh, multiple v Linux machines can share that EFS storage or FSX storage, shared storage for Windows machines and so on in AWS. Okay, in Azure, you have file shares to do uh, to, to take care of that thing again. Um, right uh, then you in azure you have other services also that you'll cover azure resource manager templates crm templates then um, which is infrastructure as a code and then uh, azure container services so you will study about containers in kubernetes also containers are lightweight vms like okay um, which can host your uh, microservices based applications correct so all of this and many many more services you will learn guys in in aws and azure these are just a few that are marked here uh, thank you so much, Dr. Bhushan, first of all, answering Shubham's question and also taking us through the tools and platforms here. And uh, let's move on to the capstone project here. So the capstone projects here, basically, you can use to showcase your future employees, which you will get to work on uh, through this program. Uh, what exactly are capstone projects? Capstone projects basically mimic real life business scenarios for true experience, which you can showcase in your portfolio. So considering that you're coming from a completely non-cloud computing background, uh, the having a capstone project would definitely help you know boost your uh, portfolio here. And uh, as we have mentioned earlier, that you get to work on industry-based hands-on projects for your portfolio where uh, basically uh, you can see the, the projects which you can choose to work on uh, deploy an online video uh, subscription application on the uh, cloud deploy uh, online healthcare application on the cloud uh, deploying a restaurant application to the cloud and the last one deploying cart management application to the cloud uh, interestingly we have actually covered a lot of these project demos you know in the previous uh, webinars here uh, which you can check out, you know, I'll be sharing the link towards it uh, the, later. And also a uh, simply run community you, you get access to which supports you here. The learner gets access to instructors, a program manager, a cohort manager, uh, the curriculum and resources and uh, learning teams and peers, you know, which we have also talked about earlier. So uh, the learning environment here. So the learning environment for the program, I think uh, Dr. Purushrutam, you have basically taken us to the learning environment, right? Like basically how it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can take you through that. Sure. So we have talked about how basically the program builds your uh, basically skills in cloud computing step by step. Now we'll be taking you through a quick, short learning environment, uh, which Dr. Brushotan will be sharing his screen for. So uh, you can go ahead and share your screen, Dr. Brushotan. Sure. Meanwhile, folks, while Dr. Brushotan is sharing his screen, uh, we'll be taking questions pretty soon. Uh, basically, we are near to it, so uh, we can see a lot of interesting questions from your end. We have tried answering few questions, uh, you know, throughout the session. Uh, so please don't worry. Please have some patience. We'll answer uh, all of your queries. So please don't worry about that. So okay, you. I'll uh, yeah, sure. So I'll just real quick uh, get you through here. Okay, uh, so this is the postgraduate program in cloud computing, and as you can see here, um, uh, well. Uh, you have the prerequisites tab and then uh, you get into uh, the courses tab. Now in courses, you have the orientation session for Caltech TGP cloud program, as I already told you. Then you have course one AWS solutions architect associate, then Azure administrator, then uh, the stuff that I had mentioned. Okay, apart from that, if you get into any course, let's say if you get into uh, Azure uh, EZ104, or any course guy, so you will, what you will see out there, you will see self-learning videos, now, the self-learning videos are the uh, lecture uh, recordings of, uh, these will contain the recordings of uh, what uh, of an already uh, available good trainer that you can listen to, okay, pre-recorded sessions of some good trainer that would be there. Then in the live classes tab, what you will see is, uh, you will see the lecture recordings of the live classes that you will go through. Okay, so those will be interactive classes, but even the lecture recordings of those classes would be available in this tab. And you can refer them uh, later also, correct? You will have, if you have gone with multiple classes, so you will see it in past classes, those recordings, correct? In the live classes tab. Then in the assessment tabs, as I told you, you'll have projects for every uh, course. So, so you can see the projects plus the assignments here. Well, um, you can uh, you can go through it and you will have to solve one project and one assignment to unlock your certificate. Okay, then in the reference materials, you will find ebooks, projects, lab guide, practices, cheat sheet that you can always download it from here and you, then you can refer to that material. Okay, you can learn from it. Um, now the point is that how will you do these projects? Okay, so for that, uh, 
probably you can have your personal AWS account and Azure account, but then Simply Learn tells you, even if you don't have your personal account, well, that's not a problem. We will provide you the sandbox environment. So that sandbox environment is available in the form of these labs. So see, I'm in Azure course, so I have got Azure labs here. So uh, in this, I can just say launch lab and then I can get into the lab and I can do that lab, correct? So I don't need to create my account on Azure. So that's uh, the beauty of joining the course here. You can just do it with the sandbox environment here for no extra cost. Then in the certificate section, once as I told you, you will uh, do the project and in some courses, even the assignment, you will be able to unlock the certificate like for this AZ104 Azure, certi Azure course. Once you do the project, plus if you attend the 80% of the um, um, live classes or 85% of the self-learning videos, uh, plus this project, if you'll do, uh, then you will be able to unlock this certificate. Okay. So, uh, because I told you for every course, you will get a certificate. And once you complete all the compulsory courses, then you get the um, uh, postgraduate program in cloud computing certificate from Caltech University. Correct. So that is there. And like the way I told you, I shown you the LMS part for Azure course in the same way it is available for all other courses also like AWS course and, and even the other courses also here. Correct. Uh, so that's how it goes. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So see for AWS also, it's available that way. Okay. And, um, just a second. Uh, like you saw for, uh, one second, maybe I can just refresh it. Like you saw for the compulsory courses, there's a tab given for, uh, the, uh, um, elective courses also, like these are the compulsory courses. Then you have elective courses also. Okay. And in compulsory courses, as you can see the capstone project also. So if you get into the capstone project, um, well, in Capstone Project, again, you'll have the self-learning video uh, plus the live classes by the mentor, uh, the lecture recording of that, which will help you uh, in uh, mentoring as in how you can do these Capstone Project. Okay, so that would be there. And apart from that, you have the electives also. Uh, these courses, compulsory courses, then the electives. So electives also the same LMS. They have also got like uh, the same uh, UI you will get. You will get self-learning uh, videos and then uh, the live classes also for many of them. You will get it here, the lecture recordings, correct? And yeah, so you can go with it. And then finally, uh, once you have completed the required requirement of all the courses, then you can unlock your postgraduate program in cloud computing certificate from here, from Caltech University. Okay, so this is how the LMS looks like. This is how it will help you uh, in your journey. And apart from this, you have this community tab, which is a very um, useful tab, actually. Uh, here you can have the threads created. Now you can actually... Uh, uh, interact with your peers, with your other learners from your batches, plus with the trainer, plus with the um, uh, Simply Learn um, um, support staff also, uh, uh, or the TAs also uh, through this community um, uh, forum. And you can get your doubts solved. You can get your issues resolved here. Correct. Uh, so uh, this is quite uh, useful that way. Okay. The community forum. Plus if the uh, learner wants to share some extra um, uh, uh, notes with you, extra material with you, he or she can do it in the community tab, can create a separate thread and thread and can uh, share that with you. Okay. So that is there. Uh, okay. Apart from that, you have this help support uh, wherein you get, uh, I think 24 by seven support. I think you have got it. If you have any queries, you can uh, raise here and get the support of the team. You can chat with the team. Okay. So that's how uh, it goes about. I think I've covered all of this, right? Then yeah, Rasha. So uh, yeah, thank you. Sure. This is there. So thank you so much, Dr. Bhushwata, for taking us through the learning environment. And uh, let me Stop just- Stop sharing. Yeah, sure. Let me just uh, share my screen back for the folks here. So folks, that was a learning environment for you for the Caltech's uh, postgraduate program in cloud computing. Uh, we will be moving on uh, to the next slide. So uh, here we have uh, global leaders and pro as program advisors from Caltech. Uh, Rick Hefner, who is the Caltech CTMA Executive Director, has over 40 years of experience in system development and uh, has served in academic industry and research positions. John Betts here is a cloud computing uh, program director in Caltech, again, like having over 30 years of experience in working in the industry, government, and higher education. So the global leaders here uh, from Caltech make sure that Simply Learn is delivering to as per the standard 
hundreds of Caltech. And uh, moving on to the learner outcomes here. So the learners, as I've mentioned earlier, come from different, different industries. So previous classes have consisted of learners from world class organizations and diverse industries. Uh, industries like IT, software, BFSI, e-commerce and others. And uh, companies they come from are IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, Deloitte, uh, Barclays, Wells Fargo, Amazon, um, and many more like that. Uh, and the success stories uh, for a few of the success stories from uh, a lot of our learners here are uh, from Ravine, as we can see that after completing the course, uh, he could structure uh, the uh, basically his own cloud consulting vertical to offer cloud and digital consultancy to his customers. And also today uh, he's uh, added like seven new cloud uh, consultancy customers with Marriott, Radisson, Oberoi, Taj, and many other names. Uh, next one is Rajiv here, Rajiv Shivastava. Basically, uh, he says that it was an incredible learning experience. He liked the course content and uh, also the live demo on AWS and Azure, which we have basically covered as well in the program part. The instructors were very proficient and also have answered all of his questions. The certification helped him get a job, uh, basically, and with a good salary hike here. So, and also Jumna here shares that the course helped her uh, with her career growth and she got a decent job offer with a 50% salary hike after a career break. So that makes it pretty interesting. Uh, moving on, the job versus services, uh, which we have shared earlier, what you get from Simply Run, is partnered with uh, IM Jobs here. In fact, Raji was my learner. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So I'll just share back my screen once again. So sorry for the technical hiccup here. I'm just sharing back my screen once again quickly. So yeah, I'm talking about the job assist services here. Uh, so the job assist services which we have, uh, we have partnered with IM Jobs here. And in this, you get access to premium IM Jobs portal, uh, resume review and rewrite services and one-on-one -on -one interview service as well. As you're trying to get out there and basically get a job uh, in cloud computing. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, one interesting question here, uh, Dr. Prashotam, uh, from Ahmed Farooq. Uh, I've actually DM'd you on the chat here, but I'll just ping you again because we have a lot of questions in the Q&A and we'll start taking those questions now, uh, slowly, slowly. So uh, if you're a web designer, uh, can you work with cloud? If yes, what part are you going to be on? Yeah. So if you're a web designer, of course, you can work in cloud and then you can create your own websites. You can host them up. So the part that you are in uh, out is like you can um, you can just host your websites in cloud. So once you have created your website, if you're a web designer, you have designed your website, you have your website running, how you can host it in cloud, you will study it. OK, so maybe you can host it on um, the servers, virtual servers like uh, the EC2 instances or VMs in Azure, or you can even uh, host it on um, container based uh, uh, instances. OK, containers, uh, Kubernetes or maybe in, in Lambda function S3 buckets. So so you have multiple ways of hosting it in cloud based on different requirements. You can decide where you want to host it and then you can even provide the domain names to your uh, to your website. Um, with the help of DNS service in cloud, um, like you can make use of Azure DNS zones in in Azure or or Route 53 service in AWS for for providing names to your website. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, you can uh, so for that uh, you can actually register those those names also. Uh, so uh, with with any with any domain registrar like GoDaddy, Big Rock, Freenom, or or any other, or even the Route 53 in AWS provides you the service of re, uh, registering your domains also. Correct. So uh, so yes. Uh, you can use it that way. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Prashutam, for answering that. I hope Ahmed Faru that answers your question. Please do let us know in the chat or in the Q&A box here. Uh, we'll take a few more questions uh, because folks have been waiting for us to take questions. So we'll just not take it towards the end. We'll take it right away. Uh, so uh, we have a question from, uh, uh, I'm not able to, Mohsin, I think uh, the name is from the email ID, which I'm able to make out. As a software developer in embedded system, what can be the way forward in cloud? Dr. Okay, so embedded system as a software engineer in embedded system, what can be the way? Okay, so now uh, see if you are an embedded systems engineer. Okay, so um, you can get into uh, the embedded. Is it only me? I'm not able to hear Dr. Prashant. Uh, am I not audible? 
Yeah. Oh, no, 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 you are audible. Please I'm carry audible. on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, if you are an embedded systems engineer, okay, so you can you can get into the embedded related services in cloud, especially you can get into IoT related services in cloud, okay, and uh, um, uh, you can do chip level programming also, and then you can uh, you can store that data of your chip level programming uh, of your IoT related uh, programming in 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 cloud very easily. So there are a lot of IoT related stuff, IoT related services that are available. So if you are an embedded systems engineer, you can get into IoT related services in cloud, and that can solve your purpose. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Prashoto, for answering that. Uh, I hope Mohsin, that answers your uh, question. Please do let us know on uh, chat or in the Q&A box here. Uh, so the next one which we have here is by Rajiv Pathak. Uh, he says that I am a professional with 3.7 years in M365 uh, support. Uh, since I started my journey, I have aspired to be a cloud architect. And I would like to know what the career prospects in the field are and how should I take it further from here. Also, you mentioned that the 90% of companies will move to the cloud. So seemingly the migration projects will reduce and the job prospective prospects will reduce as well. So what, what would you be your comment there? Okay. So see, I would say, uh, first of all, uh, if you want to become a cloud architect with based on the number of years of experience that you have stated, immediately you may not get into the cloud architect role. But yes, you can always go with the cloud architect certification if you are interested in cloud architect role. And initially, you can become a cloud engineer. Okay. And then subsequently, uh, you can you can involve into design decisions being a cloud engineer also. And then subsequently, you can get into the cloud architect role with good number of years of experience. That that is the first part okay and then the second part is that 90% uh, of the companies will move towards the cloud so seemingly migration projects will reduce see um, it's not all about migration projects in cloud uh, see it's about migration right now uh, the, the the companies are moving towards cloud so yes there are a lot of migration related things that are happening and for doing those things as i gave as i gave you the examples like um, exabyte exabytes uh, uh, volumes of data also if you have in your on premises environment in your organization your complete data center you want to move it to cloud so probably if it takes 26 years otherwise uh, to move it which is which seems really infeasible to do it then in in cloud with let's say in aws with snow mobile service you can do it in less than six months okay so that's the beauty uh, but the point is that once they will be moved towards cloud so then these migration projects may be reduced but then the migration projects are not just for like moving your data into cloud even for cloud modernization also companies move towards cloud so see uh, the the things will keep on increasing and 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 even apart from migration related stuff, there are a lot of other things that you can get into cloud. Once you are in cloud, you have so many features that you can use and so many are evolving also. So many good features uh, you have and are coming up. And uh, even the security part, there is a lot of scope um, that uh, the, the companies offer uh, or, or the cloud providers offer to make your data secure there. So they are maturing day by day. They are providing more such related things to you. So yes, the job prospects will not reduce at all because it's not just about the migration engineer uh, that you can get into cloud. Uh, you have so many letters. And if the companies are more into the cloud, well, the job prospects will even increase, not just reduce. Because if, uh, let's say, if 90% of companies will move towards cloud, so they want their engineers to be cloud ready. They want their engineers uh, to work on to those cloud platforms. So they want their engineers to have the know-how, have the working environment in the cloud uh, domain. Otherwise, how would they hire them or how would they work with them? Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So it would uh -huh. increase. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Prashant, for you know giving a detailed explanation. I hope Rajiv uh, that answers your question. Please do let us know in chat. I think we'll take one last question before we move forward, uh, because folks have been curiously waited for uh, waiting for you know for the queries to get answered. So Niz Nizar here uh, has asked like how uh, we can move from security cl cloud and DevOps to Dev ops. Uh, ops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's pretty simple. I mean, 
see if you have the knowledge of devops related services plus security related services well that's a good mix i mean if you have uh, the 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 knowledge of both the things then uh, you can get into devsecops okay mm -hmm. so uh, then you can always transition into it because it's all about automation with devops and then security related aspects you will study in the in the in the in the in the security related services so that way you can you can easily transition yourself if you have both the knowledge of both the services uh, thank you so much for answering that, uh, Dr. Bushrutam once again. And uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I think uh, we'll take more questions, maybe uh, if we have any questions, you know, towards the end. So uh, meanwhile, uh, we would love to know your interest. Uh, would you like to enroll into the Caltex Cloud PGP uh, uh, program? Uh, so here uh, you will be getting a bonus offer as well for attending the webinar. So you can avail that by clicking on yes as the option. And uh, we have talked about the skills. We have talked about the projects you can add to your portfolio services program. We have talked about the industry projects and also a capstone project. We have talked about the career paths you can take up in 2024 here. And uh, we basically have talked about how you can transition from coming from a certain career to, you know, taking up cloud computing as a career. What are the salaries you can expect in cloud computing? So we would love to know your interest in enrollment into the Caltex postgraduate program in cloud computing. So you can see two quick options here, yes and no. Uh, if you click on yes, you can avail the bonus offer in uh, basically in the next one year. It will be available for you to avail in case you're not planning to start immediately, which that is something also I'll be asking in the upcoming slides. When do you plan to enroll? So, uh, and also sharing the upcoming course and the program fee and also details about the program link. And uh, I know that folks have joined uh, from different, different parts of the world here, not only India. So I'll be sharing the program link, which basically you can check out and uh, for your own region and check out the fee as well. So don't worry about that. Uh, as I was speaking, I can see uh, like the responses coming in is the most for enrollments towards the Caltech uh, post graduate program here in cloud computing. Uh, so that's great. Uh, but meanwhile, I'll just uh, ask few folks who have not shared the responses for the poll here before we move on to the next part of the enrollment steps of the program. Uh, please uh, quickly go and share your responses for the poll here. So are you interested in enrolling to Caltech's uh, post graduate program in cloud computing? So let's not forget the bonus offer as well. You'll be getting uh, for attending this webinar today. Oh, I can see uh, Norman ha has replied on the chat here to us that uh, interested in joining the program. So please, uh, please go and quickly vote yes if you've already done it. So that's great. You uh, basically, uh, I'll be sharing what is the process moving forward. So thank you so much for sharing that with the, on the chat here as well. And also, if any questions about the program in general, please do let us know. We'll be taking those questions upcoming. Okay, I think I'll just give uh, 10 seconds more for the poll here uh, before we move on to the enrollment steps of the program. So once again, like, would you like to enroll into Caltech's cloud computing uh, post graduate program here? So you can see a quick poll on your screen. Also, as we were talking, we have gotten almost more than 90% of the interest towards enrollment. So that's that's great. I can see a lot of folks basically expiring to becoming a cloud computing expert. Uh, so that's great. And uh, we'll just give some more time for folks uh, who are still thinking about it. I, I think only a few folks are left. So I'll just give a few more seconds for the folks here before we move on to the enrollment steps of the program. And also I'll just share the link towards the program in case you want to check out the program details in your own country region. So I'll just quickly share the link also for the program for you to check out. I've shared the link here. And also, uh, I'll just uh, quickly share if you have any questions about the program, uh, you can always reach out to us at askus at simplylearn.net. And I'll share that email ID in the chat here in case you have any questions about the program or anything in general, not only program. So I think uh, we've gotten uh, the responses here on the poll here. Uh, so I'll be ending the poll in five seconds. So five seconds more for a few folks basically who are still thinking about it. Uh, and also, thank you so much for folks who have already shared their interest towards enrollment. So I'll just give five seconds more for the poll. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll. And thank you so much for sharing the responses on the poll here. 
I saw a lot, lot of interest coming towards the enrollment part. So I'll be taking you through the enrollment step for the folks who have already shared their interest with us. So uh, there are three simple, easy steps you need to follow for the enrollment here. You need to submit an application. You can apply at askus.sentinel.net. I have just shared the email ID on the chat here. And uh, the next step here is Caltech CDMA reviews your qualification based on the eligibility and prerequisites I've shared with you earlier. And uh, based on that, you're basically you'll be getting in a learning consultant. We'll be contacting you uh, with admissions offer from Simply Learn. And also, you can basically avail the bonus offer there. So don't forget that. Uh, I think folks asked about the program fee and when is the upcoming uh, schedule cohort for the program as well. Uh, folks who basically want to join immediately. So I'll just quickly take you through that as well. Uh, so the program fee for Indian folks here is 1,59,000, including taxes, INA. And uh, I think someone asked about the if there is an EMI option available, you know, they would like to take up. So we have that. You can basically go for financing options available for as low as 5,411. Uh, basically INA per month and also the upcoming uh, cohort which we have uh, the classes will be starting from 2nd of December this year and the orientation induction session will be happening on 14th of November uh, this year and uh, we have limited uh, cohorts uh, per uh, basically limited seats per cohort and we only take 25 to 30 folks per cohort in order to make sure that you're getting all the attention that is required while you're taking up this program uh, so uh, I'll be asking you about when do you plan to enroll in the upcoming slides. You can basically decide based on that, you know, when do you plan to enroll. And as I mentioned earlier, that basically, uh, in case you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at askus.net. So you will see a quick on your screen here. Uh, basically, uh, when do you plan to enroll? How soon do you plan to enroll? So there are four quick options here. Uh, so for folks who basically have already asked me that when is the next upcoming cohort they would love to join, so I, I would recommend to select the immediate option here, the first one. And uh, there are three other options in case you are still planning on, you know, uh, like, you know, when to join. So within three months, within six months, and the last one more than six months from now is something much, much more suitable for you. So this is highly recommended for the folks uh, who have already shared interest towards enrollment in the previous poll here. So please do let us know. So this will give us a better idea when to reach out. And also you can avail the bonus offer you will be getting for attending this webinar here. So I'll just give 10 seconds more because as I was speaking, folks have already started sharing the responses for the poll here. Uh, and uh, we'll be moving on uh, to the Q&A part if you have any questions, but we actually have covered most of the questions here, you know, in this limited time because we have already extended the session by 20 minutes. That too, thanks to Dr. Purushottam. Uh, he actually has let us extend the session. So uh, again, like, thank you for that, Dr. Purushottam, taking us, uh, taking, you know, uh, 20 minutes more for the session. No and okay, I'll just give five seconds more for the poll here before we close this poll. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now, moving on to the last poll of the session, uh, where we would love to know that uh, you have already shared the interest towards enrollment and also have let us know when do you plan to enroll. So uh, do you need assistance into enrolling uh, into the Caltech Sports Calgary program in cloud computing? So there are two quick options here. You can select the most suitable option for you. If you want assistance, you can select the option yes. Uh, folks who are replying on chat here while, we, while I was speaking, so uh, I hope you have answered it on the poll, like more than six months from now, you've answered here on the chat here, but no ways, we'll pick it up from the chat. So not to mention, but please do uh, basically give your responses on the poll here. That really helps us, you know, like uh, reaching out to you uh, based on the responses you've given us. So I'll just give 10 seconds more for the poll here. And uh, we have extended 20 minutes for the session, but I still see stickiness of the crowd here. So that's great. Uh, so thank you so much for staying uh, with us while we extend the session by a few minutes for uh, addressing your queries here. Yes, we have gotten plenty of questions on the Q&A box, but we only have limited time to answer that. So we do these webinars like almost every day of the week. So uh, this is not the last time you're seeing us. You will see Dr. Purushottam in many more upcoming webinars here. Uh, so I'll just share the upcoming webinars link here, which you can check out and check out other webinars as well. You can register for that. And uh, I'll just quickly end the poll here because I can see folks have already shared the responses for the assistance poll here. So I'll just end the poll and uh, 
we will move on to the uh, towards the end of the program so uh, first of all i would like to thank dr purushottam for taking the time out and taking us to this career master class of uh, cloud computing uh, would you like to say something to the crowd here before we end the session yeah thank you thank you rasha for giving the opportunity and yeah i would like to tell you guys thanks a lot for being here and uh, for listening to us and yes uh, one thing i would like to tell you you will have a great time if you'll join this program and do attend uh, the other webinars that we do take up here um uh, believe me uh, if you'll join my webinar i hope you will have a great time uh, especially the um, uh, technical webinars that uh, maybe i'll be having some few in the upcoming sessions correct so uh, yeah. so yeah uh, so i would invite you to join my webinars and uh, the other webinars as well and you will have a great time here and yes of course if you'll join the course you will have a great deal ahead correct thank you agree agree to that we have a lot of industry trends and career trends upcoming you know in the coming months so again like uh, th thank you uh, dr prashantam once again and thank you uh, folks for joining us and uh, being an active audience here and a very warm audience with a lot of interesting questions we have gotten from you uh, i understand we were not on i able to answer all of them because we have a limited time and we were already extending the session so apologies for that uh, and also i think a lot of you folks have asked if the recording of the session is available so yes you will be getting the recording of the session over mail uh, and in case you want to go through it again in case you have missed something you can go through it again so don't worry about that so again we'll like once again uh, thank you everyone for joining and we'll be coming up with more interesting webinars just like this in the upcoming months also with uh, dr purushottam here so thank you once again thank you thank you